Hi, it's the Ball 1975 and welcome to Elite Dangerous on the Legacy version on Xbox. Now, recently we've had two prolonged server outages, which were a real pain for me because they happened to be like full directly on the few days that I had off. Uh, it really limited my playtime for a little while. Um, in fact, it was one of the first times ever that I've not reached the 400 uh, arc points earned for the week, um, which I was really annoyed about. But normally, uh, I would see this as a bad thing, like the server being down. But the response from FDev was actually quite hopeful. Um, you know, the servers got fixed both times reasonably quickly. Um, and, you know, I raised the support ticket. Customer service was still very good. So that side of it seems to still be working. And I have heard rumors that people have been, you know, convinced that Odyssey is going to come to either this generation or the next, maybe the next generation of consoles. Who knows? Um, and there's someone convinced that Odyssey is coming to the next generation of consoles and so Star Citizen. Um, which I wouldn't say no to, let's face it, as a console player. Uh, as a PC player, I can see why they would be annoyed with that. If Star Citizen come out on console, <laughs> that, yeah, if they made concessions in that game or uh, limited the performance in that game to allow for console, it would kind of be against what Star Citizen was originally built for, which was, you know, was the absolute upper echelon of PC gaming. However, when they started building Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous was brand new. So, yeah, let's face it, Star Citizen has been a work in progress for longer than Elite's been a game, if you can imagine that. It's crazy. So, yeah. Uh, overall, I'm interested and I'm still reasonably hopeful that one day uh, FDev will relent because as they get the game in a better and better state, as it gets more and more optimised, the chance of it coming back to console and then coming back around is possible because you know there is going to be a point at which they maybe come towards the end of development or come towards the game's, end of the game's life cycle and realise there's still a market out that they could harvest for a bit more cash. Um, the whole dropping of console in the first place never made sense to me. Um, just from uh, a pl support of players' point of view, I mean, you could have postponed it another year. You could have done all sorts of things, and yeah, console players would have been angry. But like cancelling it totally was just horrific. Um, I think definitely that was a black mark against their customer service, and you know, a lot of people boycott this game now or won't play the console version, even though they love it because of that and uh, I find that to be a shame I think that's cutting your nose off to spite your face if you've already brought the game you're not you know hurting the developer by not playing <laughs> uh, the developers more hurt if you don't buy their next one that's how you uh, protest those sort of things but anyway let's take a quick pause to have a quick advert and uh, I'll be back in a moment so we're gonna take a pause to take a quick look at what you guys sponsor with your guys' views, you help out Big Red Rooster Cockerel Rescue, helping out cocks of all sizes, all shapes, and for the love of the cock, keep watching so we can raise money for this lovely little animal rescue and save birds right on my little copay. But it's funny how small little things, random things, make me optimistic for the future of Really Dangerous on the console version of the game. Uh, number one is the Power Play War hotting up. Uh, number two is the uh, little inter-squads uh, conflict that's going on at the moment it's only a little thing between two some quite relatively small squadrons but it's still something that's going on powerplay 2 coming out for uh, PC now this one's a bit of a conspiratorial theory one but there are powerplay players on Xbox convinced they're going to ruin powerplay to such an extent on PC that the powerplay community will come back to the legacy version of the game if that happens, I would laugh my butt off. I don't think it will. Um, but the thing is, the what makes Powerplay special and what makes Powerplay enjoyable, I don't think FDev have, have a clue. <laughs> so, well, FDev now don't have a clue. FDev back then did, which is why they brought us Powerplay in the way they did. They should have done a few different things. There's plenty of rebalancing that could be done, but, you know. Oh, here's the message from FDev when they did fix the... Uh, server uh, thanks to everyone who's keeping me in the loop of that because like they say I was I, I don't follow FDev on Twitter or anything like that so if you see any notifications about that 
always feel free to friend forward them on to me and send them to me via Xbox. I'm always very interested in that sort of thing. Um, I rarely go on Reddit these days, but when I do, I just go in to check how salty the gentleman on Reddit that keeps putting bounties on me is. Uh, as to Discord, I'm not that active on Discord, um, but if you ever got a message from me, you can reach me via the Dark Marauders Discord. I do check that one at least semi-regularly. And uh, yeah, I'm the the way they handled the service going down was actually not bad. It was, you know, it's not great that the service went down and I missed two days of playing out of play or at least two extended periods of being able to play. But the fact it was fixed in a relatively good, you know, speedy ripping fashion, and the fact that they're still maintaining this game, and the fact I was just in a party with like seven, eight people playing this game, is still miraculous to me. The fact that I looked at my friends list and there was 11 players playing Elite Dangerous, um, still gives me hope. Hope, the greatest of all curses. That's, a quote from a Terry Pratchett novel, and I'll say that's all. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.